Hey developers, welcome back to part three of my series where I show you how to create an e-commerce type store, maybe something you would show on your portfolio using the coder.com IDE. And as always, you can click below, there's a link to coder.com and you can go ahead and sign up for free and check out how you create your own projects inside of it. So also, if you haven't been following along, I put a link below of the first two videos so you guys can use those links and start at the beginning and then continue on from there. So you can see here, this is the application that we have so far and we're just using the Angular Material menu at the top and we're using these matte tiles to create just a really simple layout and then we have a header and a footer. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of refactoring and uh, we're going to go ahead and add a few more features. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my app here, source. And first thing I want to do is I want to move a few things. So if you remember before in my welcome route, I have this app header at the top and then I have the app footer. So I'm going to move this app header to the app uh, component, app component HTML file. And I'll put it right here. And then I'm going to put the app, the footer for this. I'm going to put it right underneath here. So I'm going to grab the app footer. That way it shows up in every page is what I'm trying to do. And I'll put it right here. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to reload it to make sure it still works. Yep, looks like it works. So that's good. And then the next thing I want to do is I already have the server running. If you remember correctly, I can run this command, the ng serve command. But I want to create a component. So I'm going to create ng generate, g for generate. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to create a service, ng gs or generate service. And then I'm going to type in the name of the service. And I think I'm going to call this store info. And so you can see here it added a store info. And if we go back to our app here, let's close a few windows. I'm going to go ahead and restart it again. And what we want to do is we want to use the store info to save information of our products. And we want to share it between the product component and between the welcome component. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go and jump in the app module here. And I just want to add it at the top. So I'm going to import store info service. And I make it from from slash store info dot service. And I'll save it here. And then in the since it's a service, I actually have to add it into the providers of our module. So inside of providers here, I'm going to add the store info service. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to reload it to make sure I don't have any errors. So everything is still working, which is good. And now I want to see if I can move this, everything inside here into the service. But before I do that, I want to do a couple, one other change. So if you remember correctly, if we look at our welcome component here, we have the router link connected to the text, the tile.txt. So if you can look right here, tile.txt. So if we click here, we can't actually click anywhere except the actual text to get to the route. So we want to change that. So that should be easy. So I'm going to just cut this out of here. And then I'm just going to add it to the end of the matte grid tile like this. I'm going to save it and reload it. You can see everything's still working. And if you click here, now you can see I can click anywhere in the tile and it brings me to the route and it passes the parameter in. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Another change that I was thinking about doing is that we have these names here. And also when you click on here, you see there's a one, but the way we're re the way we're getting those numbers is if you take a look here, we have this ng4. We're doing let tile of tiles and then let i equals index. But instead of using index, wouldn't it be nice if we actually had the ID 
on the tile object itself. So if we go back here and we look at our object, you can see here it is, we have tiles tile, and we have a text column close, a rows in class. But let's make a little bit of a change here. Let's first, let's create a models folder. So I'm gonna create a new folder, I'm gonna call it models. And then inside that folder, I'm gonna copy and paste this interface. So this is the interface that we're using, that uh, we're using. So we're gonna do a new file, I'm gonna call it tile.ts, and then I'm gonna paste it. And I'm gonna add one more, I'm gonna add an ID of type number. And so what this is in, in TypeScript, so we have this model. Each model can be connected as a type of type that we can set towards different things in our app. So this is the type of type for tile that we're gonna use in our app. And we're gonna put in the models tiles fold, folder. So instead of having it imported in here, we're gonna import it in here like this tile from, and then we're gonna import it from the and dot dot models dot tile. And then it should still work. So I'm gonna save here, make sure this is saved. I'm gonna reload the app to make sure everything works. And it does, we don't have any errors, so that's good. Uh, one thing we do is we have an ID here, but we haven't set the ID, so we will need to set that. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quickly. ID equals one. Okay, so now we have that working. And I'm gonna close a few windows here. And we'll close a few more. And we see we had an error here, but we no longer have an error, which is good. So if we refresh it, should load up like it's normally, doesn't have any errors. And just to make sure this is working, I'm gonna go into the welcome component. Now we have these IDs here. And I'm gonna see if I can see the IDs. So first I'm gonna put still tile.txt, we'll do tile.id. I just wanna make sure it's pulling the IDs correctly. Okay, great, we see one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could see all the tiles, the IDs are working, which is good. So I'll put that back to text. And then we wanna change this. So if we look here, and you could see right here we have this router link. So instead of putting in using the let i equals index, I'm going to delete that. And I'm just going to put in the tile.id. And I'm going to save it. So now we're back to the normal text. But if you click on it, now it's going to 1. But this is actually good from the id instead, which is perfect. That's what we want. Another thing we want to do is we want to do a little bit of refactoring. So I want to take this tiles and move it to the service. And what a service is, as I created it earlier, is service is something that you can share information between multiple components within the app. Uh, it's not as flexible as an NGRX, which is the store or Redux store that you Redux and, and Flux are type of of single source of truth for your information in your application. So it's not as flexible as an NGRX store, but the service can provide us a way to share information between our welcome component and our product component. So let's see if we can make that change. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna cut this out of here and I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna get an error here because now we're not gonna have any information and I'm gonna take it back to my service, which is right here, and I'm gonna paste it. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna import in that model, our tile model, so we don't wanna to forget to do that. And that's gonna be in the dot slash models slash tile. So once again, we're not gonna see anything, but there it is. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go back to my welcome component and I'm going to inject the service inside of it. So I'm gonna welcome component here and the way you do that in Angular is inside the constructor, you can actually access it. So I do, well first I'll import it in. So I'll import, it's the, uh, it's the store info 
test service. And I'm going to do it from, and we're going to do like this, dot dot slash store info dot service. And then inside our constructor here, we'll do private store info. That's the name that we're going to use locally inside the component. And then we're going to put the type, which is store info service. And we're going to save it there. And just to make sure everything's working, I'm going to put a console log this.store info to see if it gets it. So I'm going to save it here. And I'm going to inspect and look at my console. You can see here's the store info service, and here's all the tiles. Uh, I can see that. In fact, I will move this to uh, what I'll do to make this a little easier. I'm going to move it to the right hand side. So you can see it right here. So we definitely, it's definitely in the service now and we can access it. So what we want to do now is be able to uh, display it on the screen. So if we look back at our HTML, we still have this tile, but obviously there's a problem. It's not there anymore. So I'm going to add it back in. We're going to put in this tile and I'm going to put a type tile. It's an array. And then I'm going to do this dot tile equals this dot store info dot tile. Oops, I need to do one more thing. I need to put in tiles here. It's with an S and this dot tiles equals store info dot tiles. It's all plural. So I'm going to save that and reload it. And great, now we have our app again. You can see here that now we have, it's working as we expected, but now it's grabbing it from the service. So let's take a look in the service itself. Uh, actually, let's take a look at the product component. So if you look at the product component, all we show is product works and index, but wouldn't it be nice if it actually showed this one, two, three, four, five, six in there. But let's, let's change that real quickly. If we go back to our service, our store info service. I'm going to change this text to something that makes a little bit more sense. So I'm going to call it, I don't know, pants. So I'm going to save it there. So now we have a little bit more descriptive, but obviously these all these pictures are random, but you can see like this is the, the information for this product. And now inside our product component, we can now also access this same we can also access this same service. So I can do private store info, type store info service, and then I'm gonna import it in. And now we're gonna do a little bit different here with this params. So we're gonna have some curly brackets here. And instead of doing it this way, we're going to do, uh, we, what we want to do is we want to look up based on the ID that gets passed in as a parameter into the product route. We want to look up in the store info, which product that is, and then display the information on the screen when someone goes to that route. Uh, so that's a little bit complicated, but it, it's really easy. I'll show you how it works here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a new something else. I'm going to call something called product info. And I'm just going to have it any. That's the type of version in TypeScript. So I'm going to have type any. I'm not going to worry about the type. So I'm going to do this dot product info. And I'm going to have this dot store info dot tiles dot reduce. So basically, we're going to create a reduce function to do a search through the array of objects to find which one matches the ID that was passed in with the parameter and then return it as an object back. So we're going to look for two things, an object and an item. And I'll go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. We'll do our arrow function. And then this time we're going to return this.index. Why I put the plus there is because it's actually string and that automatically converts it over to a number. We're going to see if that equals that this dot, uh, excuse me, that it's going to, if it equals the item.id, which is, remember, item is the individual in this array, item is the individual object, and the ID is one of the keys in there. 
So if those equal, then I'm going to do a ternary operator here. So we're going to return back the item, otherwise we're going to return back the object. And then we're going to have set it to an object. So basically we're reducing this. It's going to produce just one object that matches and it's going to, re it's going to be an object that we can use later on. So I'm going to save it there. I'm going to go back here to our product.html and then I'm just going to do this I'm just to see if it returns anything. I'm going to save it. And if I click on one of these, you can see object object. So, but what if we want the object.text? So we'll save it. Great, we see pants here. Um, so it returned pants. So I'm going to do this just to make it a little bit more obvious. I'm going to delete this, delete this, delete this h1 h1 save it great pants so we're gonna hit back here we go suit you see suit socks socks see it's pulling the information for this object that we can then show which is perfect uh, one other thing i want to do is just a little bit of housekeeping and maintenance on our header looks pretty bad i just want to do a little bit better job at that uh, so what I'm going to do in our HTML is first off, I don't need this map menu. That's only needed if you're going to have like levels of multiple things in there. We don't need that, like a drop down. So instead, I'm going to create a div. So I'm going to create a header. Okay, I got my buttons in here. I'm going to add, add in a router link, and what this is, does is it's a directive that we can go ahead and link to some area in our, some other area inside our app here. So we're gonna just, oops, we'll just go ahead and put slash in for now, that'll work. So we hit slash, it goes back to the main page. And we'll just do a little bit of housekeeping on here. Uh, I created a menu header, so I'm gonna add some CSS for that. Okay, great. And so what I did here is I added menu header, display flex, justify content center, margin bottom 40. So now it's in the middle. It's a little bit better. Um, obviously, we could do a lot more with this, but I just want to show you how easy it is to work with Angular and Coder.com to create your product. And let's try to add a little bit more to the footer as well. So if I look at our footer and I look at it inside here, footer is at the top which throws me off sometimes. So I, nothing really crazy here. So I'm gonna add in some HTML to create a real simple structure of what it might look like in a real world. So just one second. Okay, so I got the structure in here. I have a footer, I have some links. Obviously I can add a router info to have links at the bottom that go to the same place as the top, but for now I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. I'm gonna save it. And now you can see have these pretty ugly looking links at the bottom. So I'm going to add some quick CSS and I'm going to copy and paste it from another screen. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a footer, a background color, uh, the text color is white, I'm doing display box again, just to find the content with space around, some margin at the top, some text height to make it a little bit not so close together, a little bit of lines, letter spacing too. So if I save that and it refreshes, okay, great. Now I have this, this kind of perfect looking, uh, not, not the most beautiful, but it's a nice header you can see here. So that's, that's pretty much what I'm going to do for this, the, these, this video. I think this is a good starting point for you guys to get an idea of how to use angular and how to use uh, coder.com. Like I said, uh, we can definitely do a lot more here. You can see uh, if I go to each route, I could probably put in like a whole description of the shoes in here. I can add more pictures in at this place. I can add a, you know, add to cart button, uh, lots of more stuff to do, but I'm gonna leave it up for you guys to see what you can do with this project. I'll leave a link below with the GitHub where you can download this and then try to put it up on coder.com yourself to check it out. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. And if you like these, but these type of videos, click that subscribe button and also click that like button. Thanks.